work that sticks. Why not think big? Back so soon? I said get rid of him, not natter with him like two old ladies. Kill him! Kill him now! Look at this wreck. No taxpayer coin has touched it in a hot century. He kicks the edge of the bridge, sending a sizable chunk of rock flying perilously close to your eye. I'm the only thing standing between this bridge and the void. These days, everything is in decline. Well, I killed them. Nobody crosses my bridge for free, and they didn't pay the toll. Mind you, they hadn't tongues to bargain with, nor pockets for coin. But still, a troll must stand by his principles. Traitor! Turncoat! He smirks as he raises tree trunk sized arms overhead and lunges for you. Somehow, you get the feeling that you're actually giving him what he really wanted all along an enemy.
You again. Got the coin to pass, have you? Aren't you just my favorite person today? Business can be rough sometimes, but paying customers like you make it all worth it. I've even been thinking lately about improving my business. Grog had some interesting ideas, so I'll be trying out some of his policies. Let me know how you like them. I always value the feedback of my treasured customers. For you, a pittance. Grog? Grog's bridge is nothing compared to my little beauty. I am oh so sorry, but these new prices are non-negotiable. Cost of business in the area, you know. Inflation, interest rates, void woken attacks. Oh, that's not so nice. Not so nice at all. Oh, I 
give up my wings for a respite from this pestilence. My feathers are molting. My wings can't carry me anymore. I feel so cold. All I can think about is warmth. It painstakingly attempts to flap its spindly wings, failing miserably. I doubt anything can remedy how terrible I feel. The bird ruffles its patchy coat of feathers, glaring at you with beady eyes. You're no healer. How dare you suggest such a thing? Besides, I'm far too valuable, a trophy animal, to just be put down. The bird's head droops miserably. There's no better offers on the horizon. Oh, all right. Do it. Just try and make it quick. Spotted something. Jonathan, how long has it been? Gareth looks to the limp body at his feet, then to you, sword raised. He isn't quite present, but lost in his own tangled thoughts. I knew I'd see him again. I wish it hadn't been like this. Indeed, yet more than that. His name is Jonathan. He is my friend, or was my friend. I led him here. I felt someone's gaze on me from almost the very moment I stepped foot on the coast. Lucian taught never to ignore augury. And sure enough, I saw the flash of white. I heard the sprigs snapping. Someone was watching, following. I came here and waited. The door swung open and it was him. A face I hadn't seen since I was called to the Seekers. He didn't say a word, just flashed the arrest warrant. Seems he didn't expect the punch. Now, now I must do as duty requires. Gareth raises his blade and tightens his grip, but falters. He cannot strike the final blow. Gareth's fingers open and close around his sword's hilt. His breathing slows and his face relaxes, yet his arm remains suspended. Gareth lowers his arm and straightens his spine. I know a safe place nearby, away from the creatures of the meadows. I'll take him there. He'll be untouched until he wakes. I pray he remembers what we were, and what we still might be, should Lucian will it.
You may have heard rumors of a rat problem down here. The rumors are true, but not in the way you think. Oh, said not to worry about the rats. Lucky vine. Take it off me! You won't take it off me! The book! Atlas's book! You won't take it off me! Well, that's no good. You have it, Geraldine. Oh, Mabel, I couldn't do that. I insist. Okay, then, thanks. I'll have it. Mabel gives Geraldine a side-eyed look, then sighs. Go on, then. Uh... Look, we're cows who were once people who were enslaved and bewitched by a nasty old... uh... witch. We don't have much to offer. That's totally me. Mabel snorts, but you can see that she's fuming. Yes, totally me. 
Thanks, Mabel. I love you. Me, please. Geraldine listens with bated breath. Mabel pretends not to care. I'm humbly grateful. Truly. I'm sorry, Geraldine. Mabel, you're such a cow. That's better. Don't worry, Geraldine. I'll look after you. Glad to see you. You still have my gratitude. Thanks for keeping quiet about, you know. Geraldine gives you a blank look. She blinks her long, luscious eyelashes, then remembers she's supposed to be annoyed with you. She harumphs. There's paladins up ahead, men of my vintage. Wonder if I served with any of them back in the war. Who goes there? Ha! <laughs> if you're looking for adventure, east the way to go. It's a void woken hellhole over there. Sorcerer at work. Powerful one. Of course, you could wait for the magisters to sort them out. You'll be waiting. Holding the fort like we always do. Usually the fort in question is bigger than this one, but you do the job in front of you, don't you? Seems someone high up doesn't trust the magisters to do their jobs out there. What should you expect beyond the bridge? <laughs> expect sorcery of the highest order. Expect Void Woken, bigger and badder than you've ever seen. Expect the Void. Expect to die. Go on through, adventurer. We won't stop you. Heading east? If I were you, I wouldn't. <laughs> you look tough, but you ain't tough enough. East'll be your funeral. The rolling pastures of Paradise Downs ain't paradisical no more. You've hit a nerve. He looks away. Ain't none of your business why I'm still here. He can't look you in the eye. I left my girl out there, all right? Sally and me got split up, and I said we'd meet up here. And I ain't going back out there looking for her. You can judge me all you want. I ain't ashamed. She'll do better with an ordinary man with flaws than a dead hero with none. You ain't seen it out there. You'll find your own limits quick enough. He turns away. As I live and scarcely breathe, if it isn't Ifen Ben Mezd. Thought you died in the death fog. Thought you died a hero. But I suppose it's better to live as one. We really gave those black ring what for, eh? Wiped them all out in the blink of an eye. Damn proud to have served with you, Ben Mezd. Damned proud. That's the way of the world. No point crying over it. We soldiers, damn it. So long as our own are fed and clothed and safe from the horrors of the void, that's all we can do. Speaking of fed and clothed, you're looking a little ragged yourself. I have some work I could send your way, if you're interested. He taps a finger on the map on the table. Here, in the Black Pits, are white magisters. Their operation is shrouded in mystery. And this pricks our ears. We are gravely concerned. We believe the White Magisters may have strayed into the darkness. We suspect that Dallas herself and her master, Vriedemann, are the inspiration for these dark endeavors. Look under the white veil of secrecy and report back. How much do you want? I have fewer paladins to pay, so I have ready gold. But there are limits. He thinks on this. It's a hefty amount, but for a job well done, we can stretch to it. He offers you an item. A whistle-like device sits nestled in your hand. 
When you're ready, send a war owl. Be careful out there. It's a dangerous place these days. And I'd like to think I'll hear from you again. And adventurer. He looks you in the eye. I know it goes without saying, Ben Mezd, but don't get caught. As you're about to address the paladin, the Red Prince interrupts and asks him if he's seen a lizard matching Brahmus's description. The paladin says that indeed he did, but that Brahmus left in a hurry when a band of rather intimidating looking lizards showed up. One of the scouts saw him heading south in the direction of the graveyard. That's all he knows. Right. I have the information I came for. He's all yours now. A weary paladin strips equipment from the bodies of the dead, singing softly to himself. He looks you up and down, then nods a greeting. Oh, pity you just arrived. We could have used adventurers like you in that last fight. We're short-handed, deserters, if you can believe that. Abandoned their post and wandered off into the wastelands. Left their friends here to die. It's shameful. We think alike, you and I. See the captain, adventurer. He'll put some work your way. I heard you might be coming through this way. Good on you for the help you gave Loar. Good on you indeed. Happy to. Some of that stuff's not bad, friend. It's a little better now if I say so myself. Good luck to you. But I'm doing Loar's good work too. I'll be helping the pallies here with their uprising in arcs. If you're looking to fight, I can use the help. If you're looking to chat while enjoying the view, then bugger off. and sends arrow after arrow into the trees. She whips her head and fixes you with an intense look. There, uh, coming. That, my friend, depends on your definition of okay. There's void woken out there and they're coming for us. She turns back to the forest, her bow held ready. I guess I can be okay with that. <laughs> 